Wow, lovely. Thank you, thank you so much. Taking forward the learning spree, let us look at trends and opportunities in venture capital. Venture capitals are critical driver of innovation and growth, providing early stage funding for startups and helping them grow into successful businesses, as we all know. And as we look to the future, there are several trends and opportunities that are shaping the venture capital landscape. So to understand this space deeply, I'm delighted to call our expert panelist, Mr. Mitesh Shah, partner at Physis Capital. Please give him a round of applause, all of you, as he comes on the stage. Calling Mr. Mitesh Shah, partner at Physis Capital, Mr. Utpal Doshi, Corporate Venture Capital and Partner at 100X VC, Mr. Pranav Sangvi, Investments, Mirak Ventures and GrowX Ventures. And to moderate this particular panel, I would like to call Mr. Vikrant Potnis. So please give all of them a round of applause as they are here to give you an insight and impact of venture capital, how venture capitals are trend, going to be trending and with the opportunities in future. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, very, very interesting segment on opportunities and trends in venture capital. A lot has actually changed over the past five years when it comes to uh, VC investments. And the objective of this particular panel is to actually understand what has changed and what are the trends that venture capital investors are looking for at this point in time. So without wasting too much time, let me get into the first question straight away. Uh, what is the next big thing that VCs are actually looking for in Indian startup ecosystem, uh, whether from a technology standpoint, whether from shift in consumer behavior standpoint. Uh, we've been hearing about a lot of technologies, uh, but from an Indian context, what are you really looking for at this point in time? Hi. Uh, well, honestly, I think at this point in time, it is the search of LPs. In this, fund in this funding winter, it's all about getting the LPs first and then about the trends. But uh, I think jokes apart, uh, uh, I think today it's generative AI, which seems to be the flavor of the season. And, uh, you know, these trends kind of keep coming and going. Uh, profitable ventures. So these are s just some general buzzwords that keep uh, doing the rounds. Uh, as a VC at uh, IPV and FISIS Capital both, uh, we always look for uh, disruptive ideas sustainable businesses and uh, we strongly believe that it is not focused on a particular sector. Uh, eventually it's about the conviction in the founding team and uh, their execution capabilities. I think uh, there are sectors uh, which can outperform the others for a while but if you are investing with a five-year horizon which a VC will do, I think it's not only about the choice of the sector, it's about uh, investing in great ideas. Uh, but having said that, I think, uh, you know, insure tech is something that we are looking at very closely. Uh, deep tech, I think that never seems to lose its sheen, right? And uh, consumer tech, anything relating to consumer, that's something which uh, remains flavor of the season always. Interesting. Well, your views? Uh, well, uh, let me just start by saying that we invest, uh, you know, at an idea stage. So at a pre-seed stage where it's just an idea, you know, it's just emerging. We are trying to identify those ideas, you know, those trends those technologies which we believe can go a long way, which create a, a moonshot idea. So that's, that's something that, uh, you know, where we do and uh, being, being agnostic, you know, I think so what we look at is it's a very simple fundamental and those are the pillars which each and every investor will basically look at. It's the team, it's the idea, it's the market. I think so these are the fundamentals that we look at, you know, when we are investing and for us, anything and everything uh, which can generate, you know, a moonshot idea or a 20x return is something which we are open to invest. So, I think And so. any specific sectors that you are currently focusing on? Uh, well, I think so. Mitesh mentioned about deep tech. I think so deep tech, uh, uh, what we are focusing is basically fintech, I think so, which is one thing that we are really looking at. Consumer, yes, we are looking at. See, uh, the, the fundamental is, you know, you look at India. India as a whole, it's uh, 140 million. 
we are a consumer economy anything and everything that you believe can really you know create a solution for you know entire economy uh, is something uh, should be the trend so fintech i think so i believe fintech should go a long way uh, consumer should go a long way uh, health tech should go a long way so i am just looking at you know 140 million janta and i am just thinking that these are three according to me are the big trends which uh, are still there and uh, which will continue interesting and now your views well uh, at mirac for us you know largely i think it's a very broad question though yeah. but uh, you know for us it's you know businesses solving real world problems and creating large scale impact in the process right so of course while the flavor of the season might change i think yeah. the larger agenda remains the same right uh, well you know to to add on to what uh, you know midesh bhai said about uh, gen ai right i think we 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 particularly interested not in gen ai but infrastructure that facilitates gen ai um, that also is largely applicable for ai utilities as well right uh, if you ask me about my personal favorite i'm i'm wrapping my head around the mds the modern data stack and you know infra around that and for mirac that's a very very keen interest area right now sure. interesting so uh, mitesh coming to you uh, specifically you closely observed uh, the ola book my show story right and that uh, the, in, in during that phase changing consumer preferences really was the driving factor and a layer of technology was added on top of that and that led to uh, you know the success stories uh, uh, this question is to you specifically when it comes to b2c and then i will to you for Uh, specifically asking things related to b2b but any uh, major changing consumer behavior or preferences that you are observing and uh, which which founder should really focus on right now and where opportunities lie driven by these consumer behaviors or shifts in consumer behaviors no great question i think uh, uh, consumer behavior the fundamental principle will always remain the same uh, indian consumer especially we are a uh, 1.4 billion population and uh, one of the world's largest consumption economy 65% of our population is youth right uh, below 35 years of age in all uh, drives a huge consumption uh, consumers will always be price sensitive uh, but for the right product coming in it with the right service and all price will not be the criteria so i think this fundamental principle any business who imbibes in their philosophy and in their model Uh, will always succeed uh, you, you mentioned about ola mention about book my show uh, right uh, i think lot of businesses commit this sinful mistake of thriving their customer acquisition only based on discounts right and feel that okay it's the cac to ltv it's the word that every vc wants to understand and let's just focus on that uh, so while acquiring customer is a great idea and business will have to focus on that uh, the real key is retaining customer now that will never come with discounting that will always come with the quality of your product and service so cohorts are the most important thing but how much of your clientele you are able to retain for a b2c business in month 1 month 3 like at ola we used to measure in terms of weekly cohorts and that to not only of the passengers but also of drivers right so when you are creating something disruptive your consumer is not only important your supplier is also important so these fundamental principles in terms of the expectations that you set uh, you spoke about book my show for book my show also the moment you start discounting consumer will not value a product right so what comes to you for free you don't value it it's very very important that you test the same consumer with charging something and is he coming back so i think in terms of consumer behavior these are the fundamental principle that one needs to follow uh, right and don't worry about the top line numbers gmv and all of course now in this funding winter these are the uh, you know gyan that now people you know are are, are gaining Uh, but this has always been the case in my 10 years of investment journey this is something which is uh, always very very critical interesting uh, pranav i want to jump to you uh, specifically the same question you have lot of experience when it comes to enterprise right so any specific consumer behavior shifts when it comes to the enterprise ecosystem that you are observing that can lead to great investment opportunities in future sure i think essentially you know from a b2b standpoint right a business would adopt your product slash tool um when you're helping them solve either one of these two right one is uh 
saving them time, two is saving them money. If you're helping them do either of these things, they're absolutely going to adopt your solution. By, uh, you know, along the way, of course, there's a lot of ancillary problems that you could solve, but eventually it boils down to these two. When you speak about the last five years, earlier people weren't as wary about this. Uh, you know, there were more experimental adoptions of, let's say, SaaS tools, for example, right? Now, I think with digital adoption, ever increasing, right? It's, it's, it's increasing at the, space of, uh, at, at the speed of a spaceship. So I think people are becoming more wary about this, one. Two, you also see a lot of sprung up competition, which is why people are now more conscious when they make uh, uh, you know, a purchase or let's say a subscription. Interesting, I hope that answers interesting, it. yeah. So Utpal, I want to come to you and ask this uh, question and trend that we are seeing uh, is that, um, you know, corporates, have now started closely working with startups and are looking at uh, investing in startups and also SMEs or companies with top line of 300, 200 crores are now, uh, you know, uh, investing in the early stage ecosystem. Uh, given what is happening in terms of funding winter and slowdown when it comes to raising money from VCs, uh, what has been your experience of raising money for startups from corporates? And is that a good idea? Because strategics used to be considered as the exit for financials, and now strategics are coming in quite early, right? So what's your view on that? So um, I think let me put uh, you know, the entire answer in two buckets. So, you know, you specifically mentioned SME. That's one part of it, and the large corporates. Large corporates have already achieved something in terms of, let's say, top line market and everything. Uh, what they are relying that, you know, we have achieved a scale. Uh, probably we may not face the competition. Uh, and that was basically the historical mindset. And uh, with that, now all the startups who are coming up with disruptive ideas and technologies, they've actually started penetrating in the fort, which was created by all these corporates. So now they have started realizing that we can't just go alone. Uh, look at other way of uh, uh, doing. Uh, a corporate will have to spend huge amount uh, on R&D, creating any kind of a technology, any kind of a product, uh, where you don't really don't have a certainty how it will go. But you certainly know that these are the startups who have created some kind of a technology which we can certainly absorb. So that has now changed the whole perspective and corporates are actually looking at doing a strategy. So. Let me just give a realistic picture. Uh, the way corporates are doing is they are basically taking a strategic minority stake. Uh, you know, they keep working with uh, startups. They are opening up their channels for them, uh, making them grow. And at a particular uh, you know point of time, they're actually looking at acquiring them, so making part of that. So this is one thing which is happening at a you know large corporate. Uh, we are working with corporates, so you know that's something which is there. The other thing is. The SMEs or MSMEs. Now, these are the people who are aspired to reach a stage of a large corporate. Uh, for them, while they may have uh, sufficient money, or they have identified that, okay, fine, these are the things that we have to do. It's more about identifying who could be the right partner for them, invest in them, work with them. See, uh, according to me, SMEs and MSMEs are hustlers. Um, at par with uh, startups. They have to invest in them, partner with them, and grow with them, and reach a stage which right now what we are seeing, you know, large corporates. So, trend is changing. Corporates are actually looking at acquiring, and we are seeing not just large corporates, but even SMEs or MSMEs, or to that extent, private companies, uh, which are not listed companies. While we are working with large corporates, we have actually started working with, uh, you know, the private companies. And just an interesting fact, uh, not just the Indian corporates, but even the multinational companies, they have actually started looking at Indian ecosystem very closely. They are looking at such kind of a partnership opportunity where they are saying that, okay, fine, you know, we are also ready, we are open to partner with startups, we are ready to take them not just in India, but across the globe, wherever we are operating. So I think so. The, there's a complete mindset, mindset shift and this is going to work, uh, you know, favorably for startups going forward. Interesting. 
interesting. Mitesh, any views on this? Is your portfolio uh, experiencing this that instead of going to a VC maybe for the next round, let's explore reaching out to a corporate or, uh, you know, raise a strategic round? Well, no, totally concur with uh, what Utpal said. Uh, there is good amount of uh, hunger on both the sides uh, for strategic corporates also. And I think uh, we've seen the template playing out very well, you know, as early as Yahoo investing in Alibaba and finally I think the valuation that Yahoo got was because of the Alibaba stake and then the others. So there are a lot of examples in India also you see lot many corporate houses uh, kind of getting active and recognizing the potential the startups offer. Uh, if you speak about investment front, uh, uh, the jury is out, uh, you know, a strategic corporate coming on board, uh, how well it augurs with financial investors, right? Because both will come in with a different lens they will look at business with a different lens. Corporate will always try to kind of figure out strategic reasons for investment, right? And uh, might not always be in their interest to create a financial wealth out of that entity because ultimately if they want to acquire, sure. there might not be, uh, you know, immediate incentive to increase the valuation, which a financial investor will always think, otherwise a VC would always like to maximize the returns. Of course, they have, uh, you know, to answer to their LPs and all. So from investment perspective, I think a different Startups talking about our own portfolio, I would advise them in different way, uh, depending on what stage of exit or their journey they are in. And accordingly, the answer will differ if uh, a VC makes more sense or a strategic player makes more sense. Even a strategic player with a minority stake will make sense with a path to majority uh, or a simple buyout uh, will be more relevant. Sure, interesting. Uh, now, this question is for all of you, but I'm going to start uh, with you, Pranav. Is that, uh, you know, VCs, uh, seek uh, for quality opportunities when it comes to technology and you guys spoke about deep tech. Tech was the word. Uh, having said that, what, uh, what is observed is in the last five, seven years when it comes to the investment process of VCs, uh, nothing has really changed and adoption of technology has been very little. Uh, let's say the due diligence process still takes time, the shareholders agreement, discussion with lawyers, uh, adoption of technology has happened in possibly deal screening and sourcing, uh, but are you seeing a trend within the VC ecosystem where technology is also adopted by you guys to crunch the cycles of closing around? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, the same thing applies to us. I mean, for one, pipeline management is largely tech-enabled now, right? Uh, um, of course, a lot of the crunching also is tech enabled and by tech enabled, I don't mean GPT based. It's still done, you know, with a mix of manual and otherwise, but yeah, tech enabled, absolutely. In fact, I think latency for deal times has also decreased if I'm not wrong, right? Earlier, uh, you know, uh, at least when I started out for five, six years back, you know, a deal would take fairly a month and a half, two months to close. I think that's largely come down. In our case, we try to close. Uh, you know, one fortnight end to end, of course, uh, after which the fund transfer is. It's highly also subjective, I think, right? At the stage or at the business that you're investing, are there other investors involved? Are there earlier investors involved? So while it's subjective, absolutely. I think deal times have decreased largely because they're tech enabled now. Yeah. Uh, well, I think so technology has entered our life, day to day life and uh, you know VC world is uh, I think so same. Uh, technology has entered but as Pranav has rightly said you know the kind of investment that you are uh, making at which stage you are making you know what is the process which basically takes you to close a deal. Now that is crunched now you know I'll have to say that you know when I'm looking at we are investing at a pre-seed stage. So we are the first investor. Uh, we don't deal with other investors. We directly, in, uh, you know, interact with the founders. For us, uh, you know, couple of parameters look together, and uh, you know, set process. Like you know, we are the first one to, uh, you know, introduce iSafe in India, uh, which is basically a replacement of SHA. So we are doing away with you know those legal uh, terminology, which actually uh, increases the whole cycle of funding. So for us, you know. If the startup is shortlisted, if the term sheet is signed, uh, for us the funding process, you know, gets over in probably three weeks kind of a time. So we are trying to crunch that thing. 
so that we can make the funds available for the early stage startup or then a growth journey. So this is basically what we are trying to do and wherever we are able to use the technology, we are using it. I think we use a lot of technology in our startup evaluation process. I don't know if you have heard of tools like Zoom, Dropbox, Microsoft Outlook, Excel, Word. So all of these are put to use. <laughs> but uh, uh, honestly speaking, hand on my heart, uh, technology, especially in the context of VC world, can never be an enabler or a destroyer when you talk about timeline specifically. If a VC wants to do a deal within a month, he'll make sure that he gets the deal done. Uh, you know, get the DD done, get the shareholder agreement rolled out, you know, you know uh, instruct the legal team accordingly. And if somebody wants to sit on a deal, you know, want to spend time, not form conviction quickly, uh, I think the deal can go on and on. Uh, so I think it's not really about uh, technical tools or technicalities, it's just about your own conviction and the speed with uh, which you want to move. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's a very uh, intuition driven or instinct driven, uh, you know, answer as well when you get into a, a, an investment uh, for a particular entity, uh, you know, in spite of having all the comfort. Uh, so to that extent, technology can probably aid a little bit here and there, but otherwise largely it depends on your own conviction and your speed. Makes sense. Great. I am going to pause here uh, for a moment and uh, see if there are any questions from the audience uh, to the panel members. Any, any questions from anyone? Yes. Uh, have some mics. This is called funding winter. After Aman's session, which was <laughs> 2021, the funding bloom, this is where the audience is like tired and… <laughs> this is Ankush. I'm here from Delhi. And uh, thanks for the… Uh, such a beautiful uh, session. And my question to, I would say, all of the panelists here is that what exactly you guys would recommend like all of us who whosoever are attending this event from startup perspective in terms of you know somebody might be in category of apparel or beverage so it's, it's a very general generic question that as you said uh, sir just mentioned that we would uh, look at uh, pre seed stage startups as well so what is it what kind of criteria actual criteria or what what do you feel that okay this is the real connect and that's where you say okay this, this is going to be a deal maker or you know this would lead to the investment or the transaction. So that's what and also uh, something which we guys can be prepared well in advance that okay this is what the investors are actually looking at. These are the parameters and uh, these are the categories maybe obviously one can look at your website and stuff would be mentioned that okay these are the spaces where you guys generally invest. So one can look at your portfolio and the categories which are mentioned. However, still, just to uh, have more chances to succeed in terms of raising funds, what would be the real, real-time advice you would give to the entrepreneurs that, okay, this is what you should come up with uh, in the pitch or that's how you should present yourself. You know, the idea should be structured in such a way that, yes, uh, you would really uh, like that so that, uh, yeah, it, it leads sure. to the matchmaking straight away. Noted. Okay. I'm a little confused, but okay, I'll try and answer this. Um, okay. Um, well, I don't think you can be prepared enough for an investor pitch, right? Like, however well prepared you are, I don't think you can be prepared enough. Um, there is also not anything specific that we at Mirac would look at. Uh, it's While it's subjective, I think it's accumulation of multiple things. If you're asking me you know, what those multiple things would be. A very stereotype answer would be, you know, the market size, the founder, how well you're able to build, right? And, and of course, whether at the end of it, uh, you know, you fit one of the investment areas that Mirak wants to invest in. Um, but I don't think that's a very specific answer, right? Because the, I, I don't think there can be a specific answer. Uh, at the end of it also, I think, you know, what you should focus on is chasing your customers, not the investors, because if you're chasing those customers, I think the investors will follow at some point. Or maybe you might not need it at all at the end of the day. Yeah, you, can, you can go bootstrap completely. You could, absolutely. <laughs> and also, save the equity. Yeah, that'll also, no, that'll also point you to a very important question, right? Why are you fundraising at the end of the day? Yeah. But that's, you know, a debate for a longer yeah. discussion. So I'm going to just... Uh, alter that question uh, from the perspective of uh, the 
topic which is trends and future. So, uh, Mitesh, to you is that there was a time when even idea stage companies were getting were getting funded, and now even when you reach out to an angel, there are questions around attraction, unit economics. Uh, you know, so the expectations even at an early stage has increased which means possibly that the founder's contribution has also increased. Uh, any specific reason for this trend? I think for me nothing has changed, uh, be it now or be it previously. Uh, one is the fundamental business principle. Gentlemen, to answer your question uh, in terms of what we look at, I'll not go into the standard answers like the founding team and the market and the unit economics. These are like hygiene. Anybody who's putting in money on you, will definitely look into that. For me, what will be critical is how much of a deep understanding you have about your, your own business. Uh, how much passionate about your own business you are, right? Uh, how do you think about value creation uh, for, uh, for not only the investors, but for yourself, your team uh, and the other facts. So, the fundamental principles about profitability, founder skin in the game, unit economics, uh, those were always there maybe were asked with some lag because investors were kind of getting carried away with FOMO and now these are times where they know that the deal is not going anywhere, so they will spend a little bit more time. But from your perspective as a founder, you need to have this, uh, you know, at the top of your mind. You need to be on total control of that. Uh, do not change your conviction or answer or vision just because an investor wants it certain way. It is your business, you should understand it better than anybody else and do not change this because you want somebody's check. I, I like those sort of founders who stick to their uh, stance, right? Bit stubborn, bit aggressive, borderline uh, arrogant. That are the qualities that I like and I've seen these founders kind of creating value. So, I think you should hold on to that. Interesting. So, we'll go for one last question before we uh, close the session. Yes, sir. We enterprise tech teams, are we US now looking at India as market? And there's so much happening in enterprise tech in India. Pranav, right up your alley. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'd like to address the whole Gen AI thing first, right? Like, uh, you know, ap well, for an Indian enterprise or an Indian business to be able to build in Gen AI, you're going to have to be able to fire super fast because you're competing with massive of millions of dollars. And this is how we think at Mirac, right? Uh, which is why we're excited about Gen AI, but we're also very careful about Gen AI. Uh, when we're evaluating because you're competing globally. There is no geography specific investment in Gen AI, right? Um, about the other spaces you mentioned, absolutely, I think they're extremely interesting. Um, logistics and, and I'm sorry, what else did you mention? Okay, I would, I would classify that as compound SaaS businesses, like let's say for RevOps or any CFO needs, for example, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's also an, a very, very interesting sector because one area where I see us excelling in is that from a pricing standpoint, it's exponentially cheaper and hence easily deployable globally, not only in India, but globally as well. So absolutely, I think pricing here is the edge that Indian businesses uh, working in that stage uh, are privy to. I, I, I don't... Oh, if I may, sorry. I, I don't uh, completely agree with you here. I think uh, B2B SaaS enterprise tech, in fact, uh, has been now at top of the VC's priority list, uh, you know, especially in last two years. And maybe even before that, simple rule being uh, customer acquisition is tough, but once you acquire a customer, I think the retention is very, very high. Profitable business, your margins will be very, very high if you are creating something like this. Now, these are amazing signs of a sustainable business uh, which will not depend on investors money uh, unlike a b2c business where you continuously need to kind of raise money and revamp the product and all so these are the qualities and we have seen some great startups coming out uh, in this space as well in india and creating huge amount of value uh, right be it on the uh, logistics SaaS and, and all sorts of SaaS without getting into detail so uh, ai specifically i think it's an abuse word where people have just kind of 
put AI in front of their businesses just to kind of attract investors. So again, the same point, don't need to do anything just to attract your investors. If there is a business which can create value in long term, uh, obviously it's the business to invest in and you don't have to really try hard to find investors. Great. Uh, because of the shortage of time, I'm really sorry, I'll have to kind of, uh, we can possibly network with the panel later. You I, have a point, yeah. Yeah, okay. I see, since the topic is VC trends, you know, I just want to put something. No, who creates the trend? I don't think so, we as a VC or we as an investor are creating trends. You have to really look around, you have to see, you know, what is happening across, what is happening around. This is the trend which is created by the entire population. Look around, try and find out what is the need of the day, what is the requirement which is going to go not just temporary fed kind of a thing, but it's a long way. Once you identify that, stick to it. You know what Mitesh said, that you know, stick to that conviction that yes, what you have identified or what you have created is going to go long way. And once that is done, then I think so, rather than you looking around for a trend, you yourself are creating a trend. So, you know, I think so. I that's think that's a very interesting uh, note at which we are ending this conversation. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, for becoming a part of this panel. And thank you so much for joining us uh, and patiently listening to all of us. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you.